large number of witnesses we do have. I'm very pleased with the uh, quality of the witnesses who agreed to appear, and we now turn to Dr. Felton for his testimony. He is uh, a professor in the Department of Computer Science at, at Princeton University, which also happens to be Mr. Holt's district. He recently completed a study of an electronic voting system and will give us a report on his findings. And I also understand you have a demonstration for us, Dr. Felton. You may begin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could you turn on the microphone, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee for the opportunity to testify today. Mr. Not an Chair issue, Mr. Chairman, there's lights on that. Is there a way to... Uh, yes. I wonder if the... Uh... No, much better. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. From a security standpoint, what distinguishes computerized voting systems from traditional systems is not that computers are easier to compromise, but that the consequences of compromise can be so much more severe. Tampering with an old-fashioned ballot box can affect a few hundred votes at most, but injecting a virus into a single computerized voting machine can potentially affect an entire election. Two weeks ago, my colleagues Ari Feldman and Alex Halderman and I released a detailed security analysis of this machine, the Diebold AccuVote TS, which is used in Maryland, Georgia, and elsewhere. My written testimony summarizes the findings of our study. One main finding is that the machines are susceptible to computer viruses that spread from machine to machine and silently transfer votes from one candidate to another. Such a virus requires moderate computer programming skills to construct. Launching it requires access to a single voting machine for as little as one minute. I will now demonstrate this using a virus we constructed in our laboratory. We've set up here a simulated election for president between George Washington and Benedict Arnold. It's election day morning and we just opened the polls. No votes have been cast yet. I'll start by casting the first vote. When I checked in at the polling place at the front desk, the poll workers gave me this voter card, which I now insert into the machine. I press the start button, and I choose to cast my vote for George Washington. The machine asks me to confirm my choice, and I confirm my choice and cast my ballot. The second vote is similar. I insert another voter card. I choose George Washington again, and again I confirm and cast my ballot. The third voter inserts another voter card and votes again for George Washington. The correct vote count in this election, obviously, is George Washington 3, Benedict Arnold 0. Now it's the close of election day. A poll worker inserts a special supervisor card into the machine. enters a PIN code and tells the machine to end the election and tally the votes. The machine will now print out a paper tape uh, summarizing the ballot count. When I cast my votes earlier, my choice of candidate was recorded in the machine's electronic memory. This record of my vote was invisible to me. I, have, I had no way of verifying whether it was recorded correctly or whether it was changed after it was recorded. In this machine, the records were modified by our virus. This paper tape printed out by the machine reports the election's result. Uh, and it shows George Washington with one vote and Benedict Arnold with two. Every record in the machine and outside the machine is consistent with this fraudulent result. Our technical report, referenced in my written testimony, goes into considerable detail about this problem and explains why existing election procedures are not sufficient to prevent it. One lesson is that security depends on getting the technical details right. Too often, the designers of this machine failed to get the details right. 
A good example is the access door here on the side of the machine. It protects the removable memory card that stores the votes, so the door should be locked securely, and access to the keys should be strictly limited. But in fact, tens of thousands of AccuVote machines can all be opened with the very same key. And this very same key is used widely in office furniture, jukeboxes, and even hotel minibar keys, and even hotel minibars. It's easily purchased on the internet. This one I bought online from a jukebox supply shop, and it does open the machine. The implications of our study go beyond just this machine and reveal broader systemic problems. More worrisome than any specific vulnerability is that this system, despite its many problems, was certified, purchased, and deployed by many states and counties, and has been used in important elections. We, we can do more to improve the security of our e-voting. I detail many recommendations in my study and written testimony, but one important safeguard is a voter-verified paper audit trail. A well-designed paper trail can improve security and enhance voter confidence without compromising accessibility. Certainly paper records have their drawbacks, but they have different failure modes than electronic records do. And the combination of electronic and paper records together can be more robust against fraud than either one would be alone. Getting the details of voting right is difficult, especially in today's high-tech polling place. But failure is not an option. The stakes are too high, and the risk of malfunction or fraud too great to make our current course tenable in the long run. Election experts, accessibility experts, and computer security experts all have a role to play in improving our voting system. If we work together, we can solve this problem and give the American people the voting system they deserve. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much for your testimony. Our second witness is Gary Smith. Mr. Smith is the election director in Forsyth County, Georgia. Georgia uses a paperless DRE system statewide. And for those who don't know what DRE stands for, it's Direct Recording Electronic Computer. The, uh, basically, it's the type of computer we have displayed here. Mr. Smith uses a Debolt system that was the subject of the Princeton studies. Mr. Smith also participated in the recount of the Cuyahoga County primary that was conducted on a DRE system with a paper audit trail. Mr. Smith, you are recognized. Well, as, as he's mentioned, my name's Gary Smith. I reside in Forsyth County, Georgia. Is your microphone on? Is that better? Yes. We have uh, an overflow room and people there are very okay. anxious to hear you. And all right. Well, my name is Gary Smith, as you mentioned, and uh, I am the election director for Forsyth County, Georgia. It's a county just north of Atlanta. It's uh, quite a fast-growing county. We have about 80,000 registered voters, and we are one of the top fastest-growing counties in the United States. So we have a lot of issues that we have to deal with all the time. One of the things I think that's... Uh, important maybe is to look at what those of us as election directors uh, how we come about I'm actually appointed through a selection committee that comes about where a grand jury is uh, brought forth they pick a panel of uh, people who are of the background to be able to do this it's then sent up to the uh, chief superior court judge and then I am selected from that I was selected from that